Okay, thank you very much. Right, uh, home straight, gentlemen. I'm the only thing that's standing between you and the evening meal, and that always makes me nervous. <laughs> so, so, here we go. Uh, this last little presentation is called Better Business. Um, and what's it all about? Um, it's about what does a healthy business look like? What are the, the vital signs, the right vital signs that you, you should be looking for? Um, because um, it's very easy to be looking at your business from the point of view of certain measures, um, but do you really know that everything is as good as it seems to look? So let me start by asking you a simple question. How's business, how's business at the moment for you? Pretty good. Manic. Too busy. Pretty good. Manic. Too busy? Yeah. Too busy? Tough. Tough? Okay. In certain sectors. In certain sectors, tough. Because that was my kind of question. Was the next one is what? What are the things that you're, you're saying? Those you make. You're saying those words, but what? What is the evidence? What are the measures that you're using to to make that on? Profit. Yeah. Profit. Yeah, profit. Profit. New customers. New customers. Yeah. Cash flows. Interesting. So, any others on that? A range of measures. A range of measures, some interesting measures in there. I mean, a lot of people refer to financial measures when they gauge the, uh, the health of their business. Um, and it's not that these things are wrong, but let me ask you a slightly different question, which is, which is this. How would you answer that? The purpose of business is to what? To make a living? You have to make money. So the purpose of business is to make money? That's one of the purposes. It's one of the purposes. Right. Growth. The purpose of business is job satisfaction. Yeah. services and products. Okay. Keep a roof over your head. Keep a roof over your head. So again, it's about making money in a sense, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I think it's important to be clear about what the purpose of being in business is about. The purpose of being in business or the purpose of business is to create and keep customers. Yeah? Making money is a consequence of how you do that. And it's very interesting that you gauge your performance of your business around financial outcomes when the performance of your business is all around creating and keeping customers. And we'll come back to that in a moment. That uh, phrase is coined from uh, this gentleman here, Peter Drucker, a very well-regarded uh, management thinker um, who died a number of years ago now but was uh, particularly productive in the sort of the 70s and 80s and he's the father, I don't know if you've heard of management by objectives for example. Um, he's also written several management books but um, it was Peter Drucker who uh, coined that phrase um, and what he's effectively saying is, is no customers, no business. Yeah. It's all about the customer. It's all about customers, and how good you are at that is how much money and how much profit you will make. So, you know, it's not that financial measures are wrong. It's not that financial measures shouldn't be a part of how you look at how healthy your business is. It's just that they are consequences. Yeah? They are things that happen at the end of the cycle. Yeah? The cash that you see is after everything you have done to actually get the money. So it's not they're unimportant, but they are outputs. They're the result of some things, lots of some things that have been done. The issue is, is what's the something when it comes to creating and keeping customers? What's the something that you need to do in order to get these, to get that to happen? So, marketing, yeah. <coughs> keeping customers is all about things like customer service, customer service retention, things like that. Yeah, it's all about sales and marketing. So a clear sign, oh, one thing I wanted to go on, wanted to mention before I went on, was to talk about this, which is word of mouth. <laughs> you know what's coming, don't you? Word of mouth. Word of mouth is a really smart way to market your business, isn't it? Yeah, you do fantastic work for people. They go out, they tell everybody else how great you are, and they all come and use you as well. Yeah, and lo and behold, before you know it, there are droves of people coming through the door. Well, we all know word of mouth doesn't quite work like that. Yeah. The issue is, is it is completely and utterly discretionary. Yeah? 
You have no control over what is said to whom and when, which is precisely what marketing is. So if anything, word-of-mouth marketing is the complete antithesis of marketing itself. Yeah? You know, it's nice to have. It's a measure of how good you are. Definitely. Definitely. But it's no way to create interest in your business. Yeah? You need a marketing plan. <coughs> oh, tell me something new, John. But you do. All right, what should a healthy marketing plan have, it, have in it? Uh, it does things like play to, make what's, play to what makes you different and better. So it's all about competitive advantage. And that's not about price. It's about what? Service. Service. It's about what in service. What are you? You're expert, passionate, independent, small businesses that care about customers. All of the things that certain large chains can't do. What you have to learn to do in your marketing is put that into words. <coughs> yeah? It takes account of your competitors, attacks their weaknesses, plays down their strengths, and positions your pricing against them. Because remember this morning, price was all about creating an impression of your worth. Um, and it talks to your ideal customer. Speaking their language about the things that interest them, using channels they prefer. You've heard all this before, haven't you? You've heard all this before. So, you know, why aren't you doing it? Why aren't you doing it? Or there's the other angle on this, which is, well, in actual fact, I'm quite happy in my business. It's all chugging along quite fine. There's really no need for me to do any of this sort of stuff. And whilst I'd say, well, OK, it is fine for you to run a small business at a certain size, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. But what you will need within that, though, is a way of getting hold of new customers. Because no matter what you say, you don't know whether you're in long-term decline or not. You, know, you constantly need a trickle of new business coming in the door. It's not that people go away from you because they don't like you, but people change. They move. Yeah? Customers go. They die. Yeah, they die even. <laughs> yes, it happens. God, it happens. Yes. So, you know, you need a plan for driving new customers. So, you know, how do you do that? How do you market and sell your kind of business in the right ways to people so that it sells you and creates new customers? Well, you know, an example of this, and there's several around, is taking part in things that I would call fundraising events. Yeah? So you pitch up at the local church fete. For a donation, you'll book people in. If they bring a computer along, you'll do a little free health check. Or they can book in and come to the shop and bring it to you for a donation. You get exposure to new customers in an environment that positions you and shows you have certain values in a particular way. Another angle on this, um, another customer takes part in uh, his local scout group do an annual fundraising event. They do a climbing wall, a 24-hour climbing wall exercise. How many times can they go up and down the climbing wall in the 24 hours? Yeah? Whatever, whatever turns you on. But it raises lots of money for that scout group. What he does is he pitches up and he presents them at the end for however many they've done. He presents them with a little tablet. And he times the fastest climb up and down the wall. He presents that tablet to the, the winner is the person who did the, the climb the quickest over the course of the 24 hours. Yeah? Again, it's association with a good cause. Plus, in that instance, for example, that gets local media coverage. So it's a great way of presenting your business. It didn't cost you anything to place the advert, yeah? and it's the type of coverage that you'd want, because it's talking about you and the kind of person that you are, rather than the products directly and the services that you sell. Another thing that you could do is do some training, little workshops, or even one-to-ones. Go and visit the local businesses. Yeah? Talk to other business people that you know. Say, can I come along on a lunch break? and talk to people about their computer problems, and I'll help them solve them. Great way to introduce you to a whole range of new customers, and indeed to new businesses. Good way of drumming up business. Yes, it takes your time, but it's absolutely at no cost. It presents you using all of the competitive advantages that you've got. Personal service from an expert. But you know all that. What about customer retention? The biggest cause of problems with customer retention are things to do with indifference and dissatisfaction. Yeah? 
Perceived indifference is where people leave and go away and use other suppliers because you're no longer top of mind. Yeah, it's not they didn't like you, it's just when they saw the offer or thought they needed something, they simply forgot. And unless you keep in contact with people, perceived indifference, their perception of you being indifferent to them, will drive them away. So it's things like newsletters. The dreaded social media is just another channel and being able to, to keep in contact with people. But it's a way of doing this and remaining in people's minds. Yeah, so when they see the ad for such and such in the paper, they come to you and say, do you do them? Yeah? Or when they think they want something, they get on the phone to you first and say, do you do, rather than go elsewhere. It's things around dormant customers. How many of you look at your customer base and make records of the last time that you sold something to them? One person does. Yeah? What happens if a customer hasn't bought for you for four, five, six months? Does anybody get in contact and say, hi, how are you? Are you dead? Are you dead? Yeah. <laughs> yes, no, they wouldn't get much of it. Yes, I am. Now, that would be really <laughs> concerning, wouldn't it? To do with services, but not products. To be services, but not products. OK, that's fair enough. Yeah. So you're starting to do it. But it's a simple thing, isn't it? And that's another way around perceived indifference. Loyalty schemes often gets trotted out as something to do. I put the question mark there because there's a number of downsides to loyalty schemes. A lot of loyalty schemes involve some kind of discounting. They take time and effort to administer, and discounting is something I abhor because yeah, it's a fast way to lose profit. So, yes, you can do them, but be prepared to manage them and run them. Um, and the other one that we covered off this morning in instant profit was this issue of courting complaints. Yeah? Making it easy for customers to voice dissatisfaction to you. Yeah? Everything that you do about your business needs to show that you are open to their comments. But you know all that. And you end up with a whole load of things that you need to do to run a successful business. And this is just creating and keeping customers. Yeah? Don't ask me about managing finances, managing people, and looking how effectively the business is run. Because there'll be a whole load of other things in there that you probably don't do. Yeah? And don't get me onto a balanced scorecard. Who's heard about balanced scorecards? Anybody in the room? Yeah, one person. Yeah. Balanced scorecards, any organisation can use a balanced scorecard. It's about all the, how all these different perspectives interact and how you measure them and make them work to drive financial goals. But you know, that wouldn't be really worth, worth talking about, to be honest with you. So, you know, it's all a bit tiresome, isn't it? What's this going to be really about? Okay. Here's where, we, where the rubber hits the road, all right? Just because things are okay now, just because customers are still coming through the door, doesn't mean they're going to stay that way. Yeah? How do you know next month that they will. How many people in the room manage their business finances are based on a bank statement? A few people. Yeah? A bank statement is historical. It doesn't tell you anything about the future. It tells you what has passed. It doesn't tell you what is coming. So you actually have no confidence, apart from the fact it's always been all right. Yeah? And I hope it will be next month to say or believe that the money will still keep coming in. And here's the even really, really insidious side of this, because if you never actually learn how to create and keep customers when you want to, yeah, so if you just completely rely on word of mouth and never get your head around marketing and retention, what happens when you need to? What happens when you find that your business is in trouble? Because it's too late by that point to do much. You know, the amount of customers I speak to, sales put me through to people that are having difficulty in business quite a lot. And invariably, it's too late. Because they've never done anything to look to the future. They've never learned how to market themselves. Most of the problems of the businesses I see are all to do with how to present yourself in the market and get people inquiring. And if you never learn how to manage your business finances, and it goes wrong, and you start not paying bills, and your credit rating starts to go wrong, it's too late. It's too late. So this business of living in a world where you manage a business off of a bank statement and word of mouth and you hope that people are coming, going to come through the door and you'll have enough money is not a sign of a healthy business. You know, the nice way to put it is you've been getting away with it. 
Yeah? And you may well get away with it for your entire life, but equally, I have more, con you know, I've got more than one or two examples of customers that I've spoken to. I spoke to one on, on Wednesday in this position. I spoke to one two weeks before it in this position. Same issues. Same issues. So the real question you have to ask yourself is what are you doing? Is this a hobby? Is this something that you're hoping to make a bit of money off of the back of? Yeah? And that's fine. Then that's it. That's great. That's fine. You're in the, you're in the right place. You're managing your business in a way that is entirely appropriate because it doesn't really matter. But if you are running a business, yeah, if you are making an income out of this, if you are trying to grow something that might even possibly give you a pension, if you employ people and carry that responsibility for having others in your business, um, then you really need to think about, that. yeah, you are a business. This isn't a hobby anymore. Sorry, it's not. It's become something far more important. And if you want the clearest indicator of what a healthy business would look like, it's very simple. It's businesses that are healthy are thinking about their futures. Yeah? What does that mean? That means businesses who think about their futures run themselves and measure themselves against plans. 